Hello, welcome to another video. I'm going to do some algebra problem solving today because I've noticed that most students who struggle with calculus don't struggle with the new concept. They struggle with the algebra that the new concept requires. And if you're one of those, maybe this is one of the videos that you would um, want to watch over and over again, practice and do things like this. Um, in this video, we're just going to change the subject of the formula or the relation. So, as you can see, x is isolated here, but what we're going to do is isolate t instead of isolate x. So, we're going to move this t here. So, what you're going to have on this side is just going to be t. As you can see, there is no x here. The same thing, we're going to have just t standing here, and there'll be no t on this side, and everything else is on this side. Now, why do you need to master this? It's because, for example, you cannot really decide whether a differential equation is separable or whether it's, you can't even put it in the standard form unless you can do things like this and know what to move, when to move it, and how quickly to move it, and why you should move it, okay? And you want to practice this a lot, especially if you're going into calculus or even if you're in pre-calculus at this moment, you need to be able to do this. Okay, so I'm going to show you what to do, and I know for most of my viewers, because I do mostly calculus videos, this might be like a trivial thing, but this is something you want to gain speed on, because this is not supposed to be a problem. Let's get into it. The first thing you want to say is, I'm isolating t, I'm making it the subject of the relation, and t is both up here and down here. So every time you have a rational expression or a fraction, like I call it, you want to get rid of the fraction first. And my recommended way is to look at all the denominators in the entire equation and say, okay, how many denominators do I have? I have just one. I have one plus t squared is the only term under. So I'm going to take that term and use it to multiply both sides. So the first thing is to use the term and multiply both sides, one plus t squared. So from here, you can see that this is going to cancel this out, and we're going to have an expression like this, just y multiplied by 1 minus t squared, and here you have just x, 1 plus t squared. Okay, now what you're about to isolate is already in, is currently in prison, that's how I call it. When you have a parenthesis around whatever you need to isolate, you have to open the doors of the prison, okay, and get this guy out. Maybe not a guy, I don't know, but it's, it's okay. Now, so you have to distribute. Remember, it's the first thing. There is no other way. You have to distribute because this is the guy we're focused on. So this is x plus xt squared, and we multiply this. It's going to be y minus yt squared. <clears throat> so now, put all the t squared together, okay? Gather together because we're about to announce the release, okay? So you put this guy, take him, now try to keep... Take whatever you want to isolate to the left, okay, since we're used to going from left to right. So if we move this guy here and we bring this guy here, I know some people like to say add yt squared to both sides. Um, I think that takes too long a time. I just, just move it. If you move across the equal sign, the sign changes to a plus. You're going to move this guy to the other side. The sign that was plus becomes a minus. That's how I do algebra. So it's going to be xt squared on the left. And then when this guy goes to join this guy, it becomes plus y t squared, okay? And then this guy is already here. I'm going to move the x over to this side. It becomes y minus x. And now it's easy for us to isolate t squared, okay? So if we isolate t squared by factoring, okay, t squared into x plus y, is going to be y minus x, so that we end up with t squared. Now we have to now divide, since t squared is a, is a product with this one, so we're going to divide both sides by x plus y, so t squared currently will be y minus x divided by x plus y. We are almost done, we need to find what t is because the subject 
has to be t, not t squared. So if we take the square root of both sides, we're going to say t is plus or minus the square root of y minus x divided by x plus y. This is an answer, okay? We're going to write it in three different ways. Is the plus or minus necessary? Yes, because when you take the square root of t squared, remember your answer is the absolute value of t. Okay, the square root of a square, you always get the absolute value because it could have been a positive or a negative that you squared. So it's always good to write plus or minus, okay? Always essential. If you take the square root of a number, like the square root of four is two, not negative two, but the square root of x squared is plus or minus x because you don't know what x was, okay? Um, you watch other videos, you'll see that. Now, we leave this answer this way. This is one option. We can have another option. You see, what I want, I don't want y to be on this side. Maybe there's something under here that you want to cancel out and you want it to be x minus y. So you can switch this x and y, but when you switch x and y, you put a negative sign because look, two minus one is the same thing as one minus two if you just put a negative sign here because this is one and this also will be one because negative one times negative will be a positive, so the same thing. So I can switch these two so that my answer will be t is equal to plus or minus the square root of, I'm gonna put a negative sign, let's say negative, put in the middle here and say this is x minus y over x plus y. This is another acceptable answer. But someone will say, why do you wanna have a negative sign under a square root sign? Well, you can have a negative sign under a square root sign, as long as this number is not positive. So if y is not less than x, then this is good, okay? It doesn't matter. So one last way we can present our answer is to pull out this negative um, one with the negative sign, so you can actually write it this way and say, hey, the square root of negative x minus y over x plus y can be written as the square root of negative one times the square root of x minus y over x plus y. And we know what the square root of negative one is. It is i. So you can write it this way. So you ask me, do I need to write it this way? No, this is a good answer. But what if this is what you need? So this is the problem with math generally that you get an answer doesn't mean you should stop trying to manipulate the final answer because that might be what leads you to the next step. Every discovery has been from progressive improvement, manipulation, adjustments, you know, because remember there was a time when there was no I in the whole of math. But someone said, no, don't throw this I out. It might be useful in the future. And now we know that I am useful. So the final way to present this would be to say t is equal to plus or minus. If we pull out this one here, it's going to be the negative one will be i, and then we have the square root of x minus y over x plus y. So we've got how many options? Three different ways of presenting our answers depending on what the next step for your um, work is supposed to be. So any of these will be good. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.